this distinguished group would invite me to come and share with you some of the experiences that I've had in this area and uh, hopefully provide something uh, of use to each of you in your practice and your efforts to heal people and also in your personal life. So um, I uh, always um, give notice that um, I'm speaking with my Arizona license. Unfortunately, in the state of Texas, the Texas Medical Board doesn't allow Texas physicians to speak about things that are not considered standard of care medicine. And since obviously some of the things that I'll discussing are not considered standard of care, I have to speak with my Arizona license. So, um, so uh, one little technical issue, Jerry, is there a way I can get rid of this over here on the side so that I have a full screen? Yes. Yeah. So get rid of that over there. Yep. Uh, perfect, thank you. So <clears throat> I was really asked to speak about scalar energy, but to really understand how scalar works with physiology, you really have to have uh, an understanding of really the, uh, uh, the fact that the human body is a mobile electronic device and how the electronics of the body itself works. And so I'm going to begin with that subject. Um, so just a note about how I got to be doing uh, what I'm doing and sharing this with you is that I was trained as an ophthalmologist and I had a great deal of fun being an ophthalmologist, did a lot of fun things with that, including the uh, majority of the research for the laser that's uh, used in LASIK surgery, LASIK eye surgery. But one of the things that happened is that what we didn't know is that the laser wouldn't kill viruses. And I was using it to carve scars off the cornea of a fellow who had leukemia. And as I released the scars, we also released viruses from his cornea. And they went up through my mask and into my nose and into my brain. And so I developed encephalitis. And what happened to me was that I got to where I could see a patient and know what was wrong with them but I couldn't remember uh, how to, to write a prescription. I also developed spastic movements, which doesn't work really well if you're operating inside somebody's eyeball and you uh, have a spastic movement. And then I just had overwhelming fatigue. And so um, eventually got to where I could only uh, read and understand a, a, a newspaper for two or three hours a day and then like a light switch would go off and I couldn't understand it anymore. So I slept 16 hours a day or so and um, just um, uh, couldn't function. So I had to retire at the end of November, 1995. And, and um, so I was 55 years old at the time. So I have basically went from being quite robust, had an international reputation in ophthalmology, lectured around the world, did a lot of fun things, and then just gradually faded away. So when I went to the best doctors I could find, uh, the head of the NIH Division of Infectious Disease and corneal infections in, uh, at Harvard and Boston, et cetera, they all said, well, you have three virus 